the Church of Acts, and we are in a three-week series right now on persecution and rejection. Yeah, we like, we like to preach the feel-good messages. Uh, yeah. These are all the messages they tell you. If you want to grow a church, do you don't, not don't preach, preach these. on these yeah. things. Okay. Stay away from them. We're that kind of church. Yeah. Anyhow, but it's only because we want you to get the victory. And Amen. unless we talk about the tough things, we can't find our way through those things to reach the victory God has for us. But today we're talking about the rescue plan. And... Uh, here, here's, the, here's a verse. Um, I'd love to take this out of our Bible, but it's, it is in there, so we have to acknowledge it. John 16, 33. In the world, you have trouble, <laughs> or tri- tribulation, and distress, and suffering. But be courageous, be confident, be undaunted, be filled with joy, because I have overcome the world. My conquest is accomplished, my victory abiding. Oh my goodness. You know what? We will face trouble. There is no such thing as, oh, come to know Jesus and everything's going to be peachy keen. It would be so nice, but that's just not the way it happens, right? We are in a world that is with an enemy that is real and he's going after us, but praise God, Jesus won. He has the victory and we get to live in full and complete victory. But the, um, in the early church, as we said, we are supposed to be a carry on of the church of Acts, right? The church Um, launched when the Holy Spirit came and filled all the disciples in the upper room in the book of Acts and we are carrying that on. They went through so much persecution. We last week we talked about you know the prison breaks and and they went through you know some Stephen was stoned and they were killed and all these kinds of things. So we want to talk about a little bit if they went through it we might realize that we might have to go through it. Um, But the interesting thing was that even we, we touched on this last week But even in the middle of persecution, God used that persecution not to defeat the church, but he used it to expand the church, which was really wild. Many times we think that when we are going through persecution, when we're going going through hard times, when our plans die and we have to take another road, that God's plan is over. But no, he's saying, oh, I'm just getting started. Right? See, the thing that you're in right now that you feel is trying to take you down, God is saying, oh, no, no, just wait till you see what I'm going to do at the other side of this. You see, persecution and rejection is not the end. It's maybe just the beginning. But we have to understand how to get through it. Because what about persecution today? And you're like, oh, well, you know, we don't have that to deal with. That was just the early church. Well, I beg to differ. And um, if we are not very careful and diligent to stay as a nation under God in his principles, we too could go to a place of being persecuted like some of the world is. Um, Get this. This is an interesting thing. Christian persecution around the world is actually declared to be one of the greatest human rights issues currently. Isn't that wild? It is actually one of the greatest human rights issues currently. This is crazy. If you look around the world, you kind of think, what, in this modern day and age? Yes, in this modern day and age, even within the United States right now in places, okay? Um, it, we, we have to be careful, but I want, I want you to see a headline. There's a ministry called Open Doors Ministries that works globally uh, with countries all over the world, and this was a headline that caught my attention. It says, violence and COVID-19 turn African Christians into an endangered species. Oof. Open Doors Ministry states that Africa services, service teams are sounding an alarm as persecution against Christians continue in the midst of COVID-19 f- f- food shortages. As extremists target Christians and exploit the pandemic to recruit youth into their ranks, believers are struggling to survive the severe f- food shortages, denial of government relief, and lack of medical care, all combining for a potentially disastrous powder keg situation on the world's second largest continent. This is crazy. So in Africa, Christians becoming extinct? That's crazy. But also, what about China? Beginning of this year, end of last year, the government was actually bulldozing megachurches. They were burning churches down so that the Christians wouldn't be able to meet. Crazy thing is, though, it seems like the more the government was going after them, the more they started an underground church and the the church grew, right? With the enemy, it's like, you're going to come after us? My goodness, we're going to go after the enemy and we're going to grow the church. So it's amazing what's going on. But even this summer, I was reading um, from a a missionary's report in China who said that poor Christians who um, were needing uh, government help through COVID-19, the government was telling them that if you don't denounce your faith, you cannot get relief. 
This is what's going on. In our country, or in our nation, in our globe, sorry, in our globe right now. But we have to be careful because one, I'm so grateful for the freedom of America. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that we get to worship, Let's but we have to be it, careful. People. We have to be yeah. careful. We cannot never take our freedoms for granted. But also we have to realize that not every Christian in this world in 2020 has the freedom that you and I do uh, to serve God. You know, it's interesting because when you look at the 50 most dangerous countries for Christians to be in, you would think with crazy stuff that's going on in China, they'd be number one. They're number 23. Is that interesting? North Korea is number one. China is number 23. But we will all receive persecution. Isn't that good news? Yeah. But we might as well tell you up front, you're all going to receive persecution. Now look at this, 2 Timothy 3.12. It says, for all who choose to live passionately and faithfully as worshipers of Jesus, the anointed one, will also experience persecution. And everybody says, <laughs> yay. I can't wait. It's going to be so good. But see, w w w the Bible's warning us and letting us know why so that you don't get into a slumber mode so that you're vigilant, so that you're alert, so that you understand the assignments of the enemy. His assignment never stops. Kill, steal, destroy. But in the process of that, I always like what Jesus says, but <laughs> I have come to give you life mm -hmm. and more abundantly. So in this, here it's saying when you choose to live passionately and faithfully. Okay, that's when persecution comes. I don't know if Probably most of us can say we've experienced that. But that time when you finally decide to go all in for God. That time where you decide, you know what, I'm going to get baptized. Or you know what, I'm finally going to start serving at church. Or you know what, I'm going to finally start giving at church. I guarantee you that the moment you start doing that, it's like a red flag for the enemy. He goes, uh-oh, let's shut them down. And all of a sudden the attack comes and you're like, what? But I... I just stepped in further to God. I'm spending time reading my Bible every day and now this is happening? But you know what? What I want you to know is that it will strengthen you. We talked about that last week, how those trials will actually help strengthen you if you don't allow them to defeat you. Because all that's happening is, is, is as the enemy tries to come at you, all of a sudden inside of you, you're going to start experiencing the power of God to overcome those things. You see, it's not about trying, we, we've got to make sure we don't shriek back from, from persecution, but that instead we realize that with him, we can push through the persecution. Because I guarantee you it's going to come at you, and if it hasn't come at you yet, it will. But then, you know what, the more you, you grow in God, the more your peace will be in the middle of the storm. In the middle of those bad places, all of a sudden it's like, yeah, you know what? Now... There's a story that, I'm going to throw this in, I'm chasing a rabbit here, but, but right. God, God put this on my heart. <laughs> he does it all the time, so I finally get to do one, okay. <laughs> yes. I'll just drink my drink. Go ahead, honey. It should be good. Yeah. Um, anyhow, uh, but I think too many times we try to avoid persecution. We try to do easy things. We try to... Um, keep it so that we aren't rejected, that we are loved. You know, I'm a people pleaser. Okay, that's in my nature. Okay, I want people to like me. He doesn't care. He honestly doesn't care. <laughs> she is telling the truth. I love you guys, but... <laughs> and I'm the one who's like, like me, like me, like me, like me, okay? So in that situation, though, and whatever your situation, I mean, we all have something, right? And... Uh, to avoid rejection, like rejection is one of my key hurt points. So I can do things sometimes in my natural tendency to try and avoid that rejection. But am I honoring God in that? You know, am I really standing for what's right or am I just going along with the flow? And um, there's a story about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We touched on it last week a little bit. And these are three men... Who, who advised, you know, the government. They basically worked for the government and they loved God. And King Nebuchadnezzar had a statue built and he told everyone they had to bow to worship it. And these three would not. They said, we will not bend our knee 
to anything but the Lord. And so as a result, he, he said, have them put into the fiery furnace. And he said some, they said something that I just absolutely love because what they said was, you know, our God can deliver us. But even if he doesn't, we will still not bow. You know, many times we want God to rescue us, but if he doesn't, we end up walking away from God because, well, where was he? Here, their, their, their conviction was so strong. But there's another twist in this story that I, of where I want to go with this. They could have bowed and taken a knee before that statue because that was the crowd pressure, okay? That's what everybody else was doing. And in their hearts, they're like, well, I'm not really worshiping the statue. I'm worshiping God. I'm going to take a knee so everyone thinks I'm doing what they want, but really I'm going to be praying to God. And we justify, okay? We justify going along with the crowd saying, oh, but God knows my heart. But see, they loved God so much and were in such integrity with their walk with God that they would not even give an appearance of bowing the knee to anything but God. I was praying about, God, what do I share here? Because there's a bazillion things I, I, in my flesh I could just go, yeah, about this and this and this and this. And I'm going to let the Holy Spirit speak to you, okay? One thing I do feel, though, I'll use this as an example. For instance, we just came through Halloween. Haunted houses. Oh, they're just fun, though. I don't, I'm not giving Satan glory. I'm not giving demonic activity glory. But they're just fun. Because I worship God. They are not happy with me right now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to have to get on a... on some big toes. Though. I'm going to have to get on a plane for Africa yeah. for a couple of weeks. So you can love me again. You have to make a run for the border. But, but I, I just want us to challenge ourselves because I all believe we can do a little bit better for the Lord. Will we bow ourselves to things that are glorifying the enemy and his things? No. Because it goes with the crowd or because it's everyone else is doing it or because of all these things or will we actually take a stand and going you know what yeah okay I'm just going to wait outside you guys go do that I'm going to just stay in here because I just don't feel like I want that in my spirit I, I feel like I really only want to glorify God and his what he has for us there are things that we put a knee to and say oh but God knows my heart you know I'm going to watch that that horror movie because you know I know it's not real no but are you glorifying God or are you glorifying what the enemy's trying to do okay that's where I just I really want us to understand that for the sake of avoiding persecution or rejection it is not worth taking a knee to the world because guess what yes Because what happened with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego is the king was so infuriated <laughs> that he doubled the heat in the furnace. So Seven much times. so that the, the guards dropped dead. Put him in there and the king looked in and they were standing there untouched and there was a fourth man in amongst them which was Jesus. He was amongst them. And it says they came out of that untouched and they didn't even smell like smoke. Guys, when we do not take a knee to the world, we will come out of our situation not even having a remnant of shame, come not on. having a remnant of pain of that, that tried to leave on us. So that's my challenge. Don't all bow. All right, so let me keep okay. going here. How do we make it through persecution? We're all going to find ourselves in this place but how do we find God's rescue plan? A lot of us have our own rescue plan. But we need to know what God's rescue plan is for our lives. Because when we try our own plan, a rescue plan, it doesn't work. I did it my way. When we find out what God says and how he says to get out of our situation, and it always goes, I, what I don't like about God's stuff, it always goes against my flesh. You know, you need to pray for those people. I'm like... P-R-A-Y, yeah, not E-Y. I'm thinking E-Y, you know, and she's saying A-Y. But what happens is when we, got, when we get God's plan in, in, in our lives and through the situations we walk through, all of a sudden we get his results. I want his results, but I want to do it my way. Are you with me? Does that work? No. I want to look at a story here in Acts chapter 16, 
verse 23 to 34. It's a really great story in that it shows Paul and Silas uh, were just doing something they normally were doing at that time was preaching the gospel. And here's what ends up happening for doing that. In verse 23, after they were severely beaten. Wow, I couldn't wait for that Yay. one. They were thrown into prison and the jailer was commanded to guard them securely. So the jailer placed them in the innermost cell of the prison and had their feet bound and chained. This was like maximum security plus. All they were doing was preaching the gospel. These were not rapists. These were not murderers. These were not people that fraud fraudulently messed with ballots. All they did was preach. Man, that's dangerous when you're preaching. Let's throw, can you imagine? They didn't have nice beds they could sleep on. They're sleeping on the hard ground, whether it's stone or dirt or whatever it is. And you got shackles on you. I mean, how many people want to sleep with shackles? Clunky things all over your legs and arms. I mean, after you get beaten for, like, they're thinking, God, I don't think we signed up. Like, we, did we sign up for the wrong one here? They were, taken, they were beaten severely and then shackled up and thrown into the worst place that you could be. They hit the lowest of the low. Some of you are saying, if you only knew what my life was like, I've hit the lowest of the low. I say, well, you're in good company. Stay with us because that's exactly where Paul and Silas were. They hit, the, they hit bottom. It's always good when you hit bottom, though, because it's usually when you hit bottom, something will happen in your situation if you've got God involved. So good. So this is a situation where no human can bring an escape. You know, there's many times where we can use our own wisdom, um, where people can start manipulating or try to find out your own plan to get out. This is one of those ones where, man, we need a supernatural something or we ain't getting out. That's that situation. So let's see what happens. In verse 25, Paul and Silas undaunted. I love that word. I'm going to talk about that in a second. Prayed in the middle of the night and sang songs of praise to God while all the other prisoners listened to their worship. Undaunted. They were totally unfazed. They're like, oh yeah, here we are again. Praise you, Lord. You know, whoa. Undaunted. That would be like all of you guys, okay, let's say right now there's a raid and they're going, man, you weren't supposed to be in church today and we're throwing you all in jail. In fact, we're going to put you, we're going to beat you on the way in. We're going to put you in a cell. And, and then we just go, yeah, let's continue church because we're all together. <laughs> they were undaunted, which is amazing because how many of us would go into a pity party? Do you know what, God, why did you do that? Why did that happen to me? Right? And instead, they're like, no, we're undaunted. We're just, we are praising our God. We are going to worship. You know, there can be a peace in the midst of the deepest storm. In the middle of your lowest low where everyone else is going out, you can still be at peace and go, man. In the middle of a global pandemic, you can go, man, God's got us. Whew. This is no sweat for God. Right in the middle of a financial crisis, you can go, well, I don't know how God's going to do it. But man, he's got me. He's going to pull this through. This is going to be good. You can either panic or you can go, oh my goodness, this is just an awesome opportunity for a spectacular miracle. <gasps> right? You can be undaunted in the middle of Christ. But to do that, you need to be able to trust your God. You need to know how much he loves you, how much he cares for you, and the victory he plan he has for you. Okay? Because we can be fully undaunted in I, that. I, I want to just throw this out there because we need to think about what kind of songs were they singing? Now think about that. If you're in their situation, all you did was preach the gospel. You take a big thumping. The next thing you know, in the, you're in the toughest place you can be. They throw you in jail. They don't just put you in the regular part of the jail. They put you into the maximum security. And then they chain you. And they're undaunted. I'm wondering what songs they're singing. My chains are gone. I've been set free. Or maybe I raise a hallelujah. See, I don't know about them, but they were obviously full of God because the rest of us, we would have been saying, raise a little hell, raise a little hell, raise a lot of hell. Why? Because they didn't do anything wrong. They were innocent. 
I have my rights. It's interesting how they put their own rights aside, even though they were innocent, they hadn't done anything wrong. All they were doing was healing people, helping people on the streets. So, I mean, they should lock them up for that. But they got in there and they just started giving God praise. And it's an interesting thing what happens. I like what verse 26 says. Everybody say suddenly. suddenly. A great earthquake shook the foundations of the prison. All at once, every prison door flung open and the chains of all the prisoners came loose. Now I want you to see this because not, they didn't know this was going to happen. They just said in the middle of, in the midnight hour when it's the darkest of the dark and everything's going on, they start giving God some praise. They start worshiping and all heaven breaks loose. And when all heaven breaks loose, not only do they get free, but everybody around them got do you know when you get a breakthrough and you, 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 some of you are sitting in shackles right now, but it's maybe not in a physical place, but maybe it's in a place where I'm never going to get my life together. I'm never going to shake this addiction. I'm never going to get out of debt. See, it's a shackle. I'm going to this. I'm never going to this. I'm never. And, and as long as you tell yourself that you'll never get there. But when you realize you're a child of the most high. That God before you who can be against you. You're going to shake that stuff off. You're going to get up and I'm going to church on Sunday Monday morning to praise the Lord. Well, what do you got to praise him for? I mean your life sucks. <laughs> That's the friends tell them. Don't waste your time. God's done with you. Is God ever done with any of us? In the midst of your worst situation and you start giving God some praise and getting a bounce on you. Undaunted to what really is going on in your life. And people think, I think he's, I think she needs to be checked in somewhere. <laughs> and all of a sudden you just break into this praise. Hey, come on, God's about to do something big. You get all excited about it. You're jumping and shouting and people think your life sucks. You just went through this. You just went through the shackles. But here's the good news about God. Jesus said, I came to set the prisoners. Free. When you get into his presence, freedom breaks loose. Mm -hmm. Doesn't just affect you. It affects everybody around you. Yes. Because if she can get out of it, I know I can. If he can get a breakthrough in that, I know God's no respect of persons. If he did it for her, man, him or he's got to do it for me too. See, you need to be encouraged when you hear people's testimonies. Don't get upset with them. Just say, I'm next. This is going to be good. Come on. That's the Ralph dance. Yeah. It's going to catch on. It can go viral. Anyhow, um, so Thank you got to excuse honey. us. We're just, yeah. Anyhow. Um, fully animated today. Fully animated. The thing I think, though, one, they worshiped and the chains fell off. We know that worship goes and, and does something, but I also believe there's another side to their worship. That I believe for them, worship wasn't a tool to get a victory, but it was a trust in someone, uh, in a God who deserved their praise, whether they saw it working or not. Too many times we praise God and we worship when we get our miracle, right? We're like, oh, oh. Oh, God, where are you? And then a miracle comes. Woo! Hallelujah! Praise God! Well, what about praising him when you don't see it working just because he's worthy? Not because of what he can do for you, but what, because of what he's already done. If, nothing, if he gave us nothing else but our salvation, for the rest of our lives, he is worthy for every day of our praise for the rest of our lives. So in this understanding that we have to know why we worship and praise him. And it's because he's worthy. And it's in that alignment of our worship that we worship you because you are worthy. That's when freedom starts coming. That's when it, I want to read this to you. 27. No, worship. Oh, oh no, you're, sorry. I'm yeah. jumping ahead of you. Sorry, go ahead. Honey. Worship toward, we're, we're up. We're a piece of work today, aren't we? Hallelujah. Good thing we're leaving town right after yeah. this. You know. Anyhow. Worship tore the chains off of them. It fought the enemy in the spiritual realm. 
Worship can tear the chains off of what binds you. Your worship will bring your spiritual victory. Amen. See, when you choose worship over despair, something shifts. Why? Because we are focusing, as I said, we're not worshiping as a way to manipulate God, but we are focus, refocusing ourselves on who God is. And when you refocus on who God is and how great he is and his love for you, you know, you can have a confidence, man, God's got me. He is so great that nothing is impossible. But we have to choose in those moments of despair, in those moments of the lowest of the lowest of the low, when it cannot get any worse, when it seems like hope is gone, will we worship or will we despair? Will we, we remember how great our God is? Of how amazing he is and how we can worship him? Uh, we could worship him for thousands of years and still not know all of his attributes that are amazing. Right? We need to make sure we worship him because of who he is. Listen to Now we're going to go to verse 27. Thank you. It says, startled, the jailer woke, awoke and saw every cell door standing open. Assuming that all the prisoners had escaped, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself. When Paul shouted in the darkness, stop, don't hurt yourself, we are all still here. Okay, so this jailer panicked. Obviously, this is a bad situation. As a jailer, who they were supposed to be in maximum security, the guy, who, the boss, who told him to put them there, all of a sudden they're gone. Yeah, that's like, they snuck out in the middle of the night. Yeah, I don't think so, right? He knew he was in trouble. He was in a bad situation. So he was going to kill himself. But I want you to see this, because if, if we're going to talk about persecution and rejection, we have to realize those desperate moments will come, and desperate thoughts can come. But suicide is a permanent solution to a temporary problem. Suicide is a permanent solution to a temporary problem. In that moment, you feel hopeless. You feel like it can never get better. You feel like there is no way to financially get my way out of this. There is no way my family is ever coming back together. There is no way that I can make this work. This, there, that's what you feel like, but you cannot make a permanent decision in a temporary solution. Because I want you to show, I want you to see what happens after this. Verse in 29. In 29, the jailer called for a light. When he saw that they were still in their cells, he rushed in and fell trembling at their feet. Then he led Paul and Silas outside and asked, what, what must I do to be saved? They answered, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and all your family. You got to understand, he went from suicidal to despair, suicidal despair, and in a moment, he had a spiritual awakening that changed everything. He went from ready to take it all, hopelessness, but because someone knew God, and because someone was demonstrating the power of God in their life, through their worship, this man had a spiritual awakening, and everything turned. You know, in your darkest spot right now, no matter where you go, no matter what happens, no matter what you walk in, my goodness, in a moment, God can give you an awakening and show you the hope he has for you. Okay, I want you to know God has a plan, but many times it's right after. See, this jailer's answer came right after that bottom point. And many times we think that it's over and the only solution is to take our life, but yet God's got a rescue plan on just the other side of that. If you call out to him, he has a rescue plan. God can turn even the most hopeless situations. He can find you even at your worst, most desperate moment and bring a rescue plan. There is no place you can end up that God isn't there if you cry out to him. If you just go, God, I need you now more than ever. In a moment, he can meet you. In a moment, he can turn your situation. He can turn it from a place where this guy was in massive trouble to having him and his whole family saved. Man, it's amazing what God can Look do. Look at verse 32. We're going to continue. It says, then they prophesied the word of the Lord over him. That's the, jail uh, that's the jailer. And all of his family... Even though the hour was late, he washed their wounds. Then he and all of his family were baptized. He took Paul and Silas into his home and set them at his table and fed them. The jailer and all of his family were filled with joy in their newfound faith in God. Now I want you to see something because Paul and Silas went from being this man's prisoner to being this man's honored guest. Did you get that? They were shackled in the, in, the, in, in, in the toughest spot they could be. 
But all of a sudden, and they, they, they were the bad ones in, in the jailer's eyes, but God showed up that night and did something supernatural, enough to change this, jail, this jailer's life and his whole family's life. And the next thing you know, they went from the toughest place you could be to sitting at his table eating with his family. God can turn any situation around. The one persecuting you today may be the one that serves you tomorrow. The one persecuting you today may be the one who serves you tomorrow. I, I can't even tell you how many times we've had people who, who attack us and who come after us and we've chosen God's way of just loving, right? Because remember, we don't fight against flesh and blood, we fight against the principalities behind it. We're fighting with the demonic agendas behind those people, not those people. And as we walk in love and as we continue just to do it God's way, it's amazing how many of those people who were vicious, like vicious, vicious to us, backstabbing us, have come around to serve us and say, would you forgive me? And who have done amazing things and opened doors for us that we never thought would be open. It's amazing what God can do. So remember it. But, but when you see it from this perspective that the person who's giving you a hard time right now could be the one who serves you tomorrow, that means you're going to have to treat them differently, doesn't it? Yeah, that means with our enemies, like we can't treat them like an enemy because the Bible's kind of clear about that. Now we have to treat them like, oh my goodness, they could be my answer tomorrow or they could be part of the blessing that, they could be part of the solution of the miracle God's trying to bring me. And you know, we're praying for God and all of a sudden this difficult person comes into your life and you're like, God, they are so not in my plan. And God's like, oh yeah, they are actually, right? We've, we've got to say, we've got to start looking at this a little bit differently. So I want to ask you a question, but I need you to take a deep breath first because... This is not an easy one. It says, so how will you treat the person who is coming after you? Treat them as if they could be tomorrow's solution instead of today's enemy. Now, I want you to say this because this is not easy for us to digest. Because pe people are coming after you. Your natural tendency, if you're an aggressive personality like myself. Are you with me? Is not to take a step back. Unless I'm reloading. Are you with me? <laughs> How many do we have in here that deal, that injustice really burns your wagon? Go ahead, raise your hands. You'll see them. And they... <sighs> I know you're short-circuiting this week. I know it. Because I went to watch the news at the beginning. Wait, Lord said, don't watch it not what's really going on. Don't watch that nonsense. Just stick with me. I said, well, that's probably a good idea because the flesh, come on, could get ugly. And my side of the family that came out of uh, the flesh department kind of had permanent results for people that messed around. <laughs> Thank God I'm free of that. By the way, I am leaving the country. So if something happens, it wasn't me. Uh, you guys can all testify it didn't happen. But I had the thoughts. I said, those people were gone, we'd be better off. Come on, somebody. <laughs> uh, and, I, and, then, and then my wife in the background and the Lord conjecture together. That's not me. What are you doing? I said, Lord, I'm just kind of help you out a little bit. <laughs> I'm working on it. I said, you're moving very slowly. I'm just going to help you. Come on, somebody. Here's the problem. We need to get a checkup from the neck up because if the battle is the Lord's, how do we fight it? Ooh, it's quiet in here. I hear this, ch -ch -ch, you know. How do we fight it? In the spirit world. Now, we need to give ourselves a checkup because when we're going through things that we don't see that are right, that there's injustice and this and that, you're like, man, well, let's just get this thing resolved now. And God's like, I, I got my hand on this. Would you? I'm the one that's going to display and take care of the vengeance part of this. I just need you to walk with me. So if every one of your buttons this week have been pushed and you're thinking, man, I'm just glad I got to church because I needed some worship, then turn the worship music on, turn the news off, and start giving God some proper praise. Because if you want the shackles off your life and you want him to do, there's only one way to do it. 
You can't read a book and get it. You got to get into worship. You got to get into giving God proper praise because if you want a breakthrough, it comes in pushing in with God and having God show you the answers. God can resolve any and all situations yes. if we pray. Yes. One person prayed and the heavens closed. It didn't rain all the way through Israel. Next, he turned around and he prayed for rain to come. And all of a sudden, do you know God moves when you and I get serious in our prayer life? When you and I push in, it's not in the natural fight. It's in the supernatural. We just take our authority. You are heaven's children. You live on this fallen, decayed world. But you, this is not your home. Yeah. You're just passing through. You're already heading home. People that go home to be with the Lord, I uh, said they just graduated a little earlier than we wanted them to. Are you with me? See, when we get a, 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 a change of perspective of, of where we're at, sometimes we can just start thanking God. You let God fight our battles for us. That's right. I'm preaching to myself right now, just so you know. Some of you can listen in to me, but I, I'm just preaching to myself. Lord, help me not to take this into my own hands. Lord, help me not to get angry and frustrated. Lord, help me not to take my time up and waste it, but help me just to refocus on who you yes. are and let you handle it for me. Lord, you are the one that vindicates you are the ones that sets things free. You are the one that can take the walls of Jericho and flatten them and suddenly. You're yes. the one that can break off the chains off of people's lives. You're the one that can break, cause an earthquake to break doors open. Yes. How did it happen? In the middle of worship. And when we're just singing some songs, I said, no. I said, you ought to understand something. I said, when we start worshiping God, the Bible says that he inhabits the praises of his people. That's he right. is coming. I, I want you to know something because a lot of people don't understand this. Oh, it's good God showed up. No, I said, when the president shows up, he shows up with a whole entourage. Secret service have gone ahead. They're checking everything out. They're making sure it's okay. You know, when God shows up, he only shows up with all of his heavenly armies. He doesn't come by himself. When we worship him, he invades our situation. He brings breakthroughs for our situation. His army show up and say, God, what do you want me to take care of? He says, whatever they're asking for, just, just go ahead, step in, step in, step in. And now we start seeing natural things come into action. Amen. Because God breaks loose. I want Sorry, to leave you. It's, you. it's all good. I want to leave you with this question. Your freedom will depend on how you choose to act in the middle of persecution. Will you worship or will you despair? Your freedom depends on what you choose. In the middle of that crisis, in the middle of not knowing where it's going to go, not knowing what that family situation, that financial situation, that whatever it is, your freedom will depend on what if you choose worship or, de or despair. Man, God has so much for you. We can trust him. He is a good God who wants great things for you. But we need to choose worship. We need to choose freedom. We need to choose peace. Because in the midst of the chaos, God can still bring peace. Amen. I want to just invite you to pray this with me. Say this out loud. Father, in Jesus' name. Father, in Jesus' name. Forgive me. Forgive me. Come into my life. Come into my life. Be my Lord. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Be my Savior. And help me to live for you. Help me to live for every you. day of my life. Every day of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. In Jesus' name I Amen. pray. Amen. Amen.